All right, let's start with basic subtool organization, and then we'll get a little bit more advanced. So starting with this uh, head that we've been working on, I can go to the subtool menu, and I can add more subtools to this two ways. Number one, I can go to append, and I can append anything. And the cool thing is if I append any of these primitives here, like the primitive ring, I can append a ring right here, and it's already a Polymesh 3D. So I don't have to go up here and hit the Make Polymesh 3D button. If you append something to a Polymesh 3D tool, it will go ahead and make it a Polymesh 3D. So it's already sculptable. Now I have this subtool selected. I can select this tub subtool right here. If I want to, I can go down here and I can rename this. We can call this Head. We can select this one here. You don't even have to select it. You can touch it, touch these nameplates to select them. You can also use these arrow keys. You can go up and you can go down. You can reorder them. If you hit these bent up arrows, it'll move it up or move it down. And if you have the head selected, if you go to append again and you append, say, a cube, that'll go ahead and throw that appended cube at the very bottom. However, if you have the head selected, you can go to insert and say insert the star. That'll insert that star directly underneath that selected object. And again, you can rename these things. You can reorder these things with the bent arrows. If you have the cube down here and you want it to move it all the way to the top, you can hold down shift and that'll shoot it to the very top or you can hold down shift and shoot it to the very bottom. Or you can just manually go through and just reposition it as needed. If you hit this list all, that's gonna show you your subtools in this kind of layout. You can also hit the N key to bring that up. And you can even narrow it down by name. So if you narrow it down by H, that's gonna select or show you any of the subtools that start with H. So we name this one to H test, and then we hit the N key. Well, it's not going to show it because it's selected, so you already have it selected. These are selectable subtools. What you can do is we'll grab the cube, hit the N key, tap H, that'll narrow it down to all of the subtools that start with H. You see the little T up here, you can hit T, and that'll select it. What I usually prefer to do, and what I'm going to do for this, let's see if we can do this. Let's go to Transform menu, we'll put it over here. Go ahead and hit that Expose button, and that'll go ahead and move these out of the way. So now what I can do is I can select these subtools by just alt tapping on them. That's my preferred method of selecting subtools. I rarely go over here and like hunt through here and try and see what they are. I prefer to alt tap. So to kind of see this in action, let's go ahead and turn off expose here. Let's hit the comma key. Let's go to our projects. Let's go to demo projects here. Let's load up this rifle model here. If you want to save changes, just hit no. And remember, it's going to destroy everything in there. So make sure you do a quick save or you save your Z project or your Z tools you're working on. And now you're gonna see, we have a subtool here. It's got eight subtools here. So if you hit the N key, that'll be, you can go through here and select these as needed. You can also hold down Alt and just tap through here. We can go ahead and make this uh, matte cap gray. If you go into solo mode, you can see which subtool we have selected. If you wanna group two of these, you can, you can Alt tap one, hold down Shift, shoot it to the top. Alt tap another one, hold down Shift, shoot it to the top. Now, if you just wanna look at these top two subtools, what I like to do is I can hold down Shift, turn off this eyeball, and if you have something selected and the eyeball is on and you hold down Shift and you touch it off, actually, let's see, it'll turn all your subtools off. If you turn an eyeball on, it's just gonna keep that eyeball on. It's already selected, so even if the eyeball is off, as long as you have the subtool selected, it'll go ahead and turn it on for you. But if you hold down Shift and turn an eyeball on, if it's off, it'll turn on all the eyeballs for all the subtools make them all visible. So for example, if you just want to look at these top two, hold down shift, turn the eyeball off, tap the nameplate to turn the eyeball on, and then you can just turn the eyeball on for the next one. You can go through here and you can select them. If you want to turn everything back on, hold down shift, turn the eyeball on, turn the eyeball off, or turn the eyeball off and on, and then they'll all pop back. You can alt tap this one, go into solo mode. You can work on just this one, turn solo mode off, alt tap this one. You can shoot this one to the bottom if you want to know where it is in your stack. I'll tap something else, hold down shift, shoot at the bottom, hold down shift, turn these off, turn that one on, and now you're just looking at those two subtools. Now let's say you're in ZBrush and you have subtools here and you're selecting them, you're alt tapping them to select them, and you start tumbling in your viewport and things are disappearing as you tumble. And you alt tap this one and you start, and uh, that one's the only one that's gonna stay on your screen as you tumble in your viewport. What probably happened is you accidentally hit this little dynamic over the solo button here, so again, if you have uh, dynamic off, you can just turn that on and off. You have solo on, it'll be solo, and then no matter what Z tool you have selected, it'll just be soloed out. If you have solo off, then of course all your subtools are gonna be visible if they are turned on in your subtool stack. However, if this little dynamic gets turned on, it's a feature that you can uh, alt tap in here, and then it's like a performance feature, so you can just uh, rapidly navigate. If you have very high density meshes, it'll allow you to navigate just a little bit faster.
But if you're just working and that's annoying to you, just make sure you have dynamic turned off.